Finding the best location for an overnight event is never easy. There's elements and lessons that I've learned that I'd like to share with you. Keep watching. Finding the right venue for an overnight event is not the same as finding a venue for a standalone event. We all know that the content of a program and validity of the worthwhileness of a cause is what motivates someone to give, but presenting those in the right setting and in the right atmosphere leads to the complete package and enhances a donor's experience. Finding the overnight location takes time, patience, and good understanding of the needs and wants of our donors. Hi, I'm Jim Dempsey, and this channel is designed to help leaders of nonprofit organizations increase income and become fully funded. If that sounds like something you'd like to be part of, subscribe to this channel and be part of a growing group of nonprofit leaders taking their income goals to the next level. When looking for an overnight venue, it's important to consider these key elements. The first element know your audience. Before selecting a location, it's important to understand who will be invited to this event and for what purpose. If this is a major donor weekend, the most common overnight event in fundraising, you need to do some research and find out a few items. Survey to find out what kind of properties these individuals are used to staying at when they go on vacation. Do they stay in a Best Western or do they stay in a Ritz-Carlton? Remember, just because you don't stay at a Ritz doesn't mean that your donors don't and might not be accustomed to that. Don't use the excuse that since you're a nonprofit, your donors will understand. Yes, they'll understand, but they won't attend your event. A number of years back, I took a group of donors to Istanbul to view our organization's efforts in that city. I arranged for the donors to stay in the homes of our staff to get the full experience of living in Turkey. After the first night, most, if not all, banded together and got rooms at the Hilton. I learned that donors wanted to see our organization at work, but not live life like our staff. I found that donors give because our staff are willing to work, and they aren't able, the donors aren't able or willing to do that work, but they want to partner with us, and that's why they give. Major donor events are usually offered in two ways. First, donor pays the hotel, or second, the organization pays the hotel. It's very easy to justify a more expensive hotel if the donor's paying their own expenses for the event. It's a little harder when the organization is paying the expenses. In the donor pay way, the expenses are covered and that helps the organization immediately. But the donations are less at the end of the event because the donor will factor in the cost of the hotel in their giving. In the organization pay way, the donors are more generous because the organization paid for their expenses. That seems to be the most popular method. And if that's the way you choose, then you'll need to get the best rate possible at the best location possible, which leads to element number two, shop quality and price. As basic as that sounds, your goal needs to be to find the best price possible at the best hotel you can afford. I can verify that there are very good, even five-star hotels that can be had at a very good price. It all depends on when you want to have the event. If you want to have the event during peak months and at a peak time for the hotel, you aren't going to get a good price. If you're willing to have your event just before or just after a peak time for the hotel, you can find a great deal. Find out when the peak times for the property of interest. Peak times are not all the same for every property in the United States. There are some hotels that are business hotels and they make their money on weekdays from business people. So rooms on the weekend may be had for a good price. In reverse, your hotel of choice may cater to families and a weekday event may be better. Don't expect to get a great price during cherry blossom season in Washington DC or in New Orleans during Mardi Gras. The time of the year and the days of the week are very important. Element number three, find a venue that meets all or most of your needs. Make a list of all the things you want in a property. Divide the list up by what you must have and what you'd like to have. Know that the like to have list leaves you room for negotiation. If having a spa or a golf course on property or nearby is important to you, list that out. If having a large family pool or a lazy river is important, list that as well. Some events are adults only and you might lead with things desirable to adults. 
But if this is a gathering where families are invited, look for the amenities appreciated by families. Resorts are wonderful, but they can be secluded. If they don't have things to do for adults or the whole family, you, that might not be the best place for you. But there are hotels near theme parks that are wonderful for family meetings. But I've seen adults who arrive disappointed when they see kids running around the lobby. Once again, understand your audience, know what's important to them, and provide that. Number two, take time to negotiate your most important items first. Your biggest items for negotiations are usually sleeping rooms and food and beverage. Find a room rate that is above what you would normally pay, but still within your comfort level. You might cringe, but not cringe too much. Hotels will ask you to agree to a total number of room nights for your event and then break up by how many rooms per night you want. Just know that they will ask you to determine how many king beds you want, how many queens, doubles, and even suites. A rule of thumb is that you can ask for one complimentary room for every 20 room nights. Make sure to factor in tax and gratuity if applicable for your state. Check-in and check-out times will be important to them. Be sure to see if there's a resort fee attached. That can get missed and should be negotiated away or greatly reduced. That normally includes internet, special amenities given by the property, and other items. It's important to find out what the attrition rate is, how much you reduce your guarantee by at a certain time period. They could start as low as 3% or 5%, and you should try and get them to a 10 or 20% attrition rate. That gives you latitude to drop off numbers if your attendance is not what you expected. You can negotiate cutoff date for when your rate increases from discounted to just a lower rate. Normal cutoff is one month. Negotiate for three weeks or less. Find out the cancellation fees. Most hotels have a graduated scale. You may be asked to pay a deposit, which you would lose if you cancel. But the closer you get to the event and need to cancel, the more of the estimated total revenue for the event you're going to be obligated to pay. Meals are also negotiable, and you can do so in one of two ways. Either negotiate meals one by one, choosing an actual price or a range, and find the best price that you like, or ask them to discount all the meals by a certain percentage. Negotiate separate prices for kids' meals as they're going to be cheaper. Remember to include tax and gratuity when establishing a price. A good cost-saving tip is to save your dessert from dinner and have it served at a late night or after a program reception. It's part of that original meal cost. With food and beverage, you'll have to negotiate space. Too many groups lose negotiating strength by asking for a lot of meeting space and a few rooms. Make sure that the number of sleeping rooms and meeting space match up. For example, if you're asking for 150 sleeping rooms per night, you could easily ask for space for 300 or 400 guests. But you should not ask for room for 300 to 400 guests and only ask for 25 sleeping rooms per night. They might agree to that, but you'll lose in other more important areas of negotiation. I know you want to win every negotiation. I'm that way too. But the best situation is win-win. Let them have some areas to make some money if it's not critical for you. Number three, consider other areas of negotiation. Be sure to negotiate audiovisual if you need to. I'm always going to be in favor of bringing in my own equipment because hotel AV prices are so escalated. But if you're able to negotiate, do so. Negotiate a certain percentage off prices. Determine your needs beforehand. It's so easy to get in the habit of asking for things on the spot and being charged pieces piecemeal. Parking should also be negotiated. Extras such as spa and golf are nice amenities and must be inexpensive for guests. Complimentary would be best and not more than a few blocks away. Avoid valet as required. Optional is fine. Obtain a written guarantee that there will be no conflicting event that could distract or drown out the si sound of your event. I was hurt too many times early in my career due to noisy neighbors in adjacent ballrooms. It goes without saying, but an on-site inspection is recommended before signing a contract. Before I share with you some last-minute extras, if you found this video to be helpful, hit the like button and consider sharing this video with a colleague. And please subscribe to this channel to join our community of nonprofit leaders trying to take fundraising efforts to the next level. Element number four, develop a list of essentials. There are four essentials when working with contracts. Number one, give yourself plenty of lead time. This process can take a few weeks or even a few months. 
Maintain constant communication with your site contacts. Save emails and keep everything in writing. Talk often with your coordinator and have a pre-conference meeting with all department heads so they understand exactly what you want from your event. Do not sign anything until details are sorted out. You lose all negotiating power once you sign your agreement. Also, be sure to address gratuities, re regulations, taxes. Don't give numbers of what you're willing to pay. Remember that. Protection clauses, fire protection, cancellation clauses are critical. Monetary penalties, what's the cancellation date? Can your event be canceled without penalty? Insurance, change in management, facility remodeling, all those things are important. And language assuring that the hotel represents and warrants it is in conformance with safety and health codes, especially in these COVID times, that will be in compliance with the time of the event. Finding the right venue for your overnight event can help double or even triple the total given at your event. Inviting donors to a location that is similar or a little better than they would pick themselves can increase intend attendance, involvement, and income. I'm excited for you to get a better grasp of the venue hunting process and improve your negotiating skills. Follow the tips mentioned in this video and help ensure a successful fundraising event. If you have fundraising questions, submit them on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java or email me at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And as always, I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.